All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Ali Nino here, and today I have uh, a different kind of video for you guys. Um, so I was playing a 2v2 with my partner Najim um, against uh, a couple of decent players, I think. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys my point of view. Um, of course, I am doing this after, like, on top of my recording, so it's not live per se, like, it's not while I was playing it, but that is only because now I can concentrate more on the recording rather than, you know, like, playing the game, because it's it's very difficult to balance both. So without further ado, let's do this. Yep. Okay. So, like, on the north side of the map, like this is Siberia map, on the north side of the map we have um, our O Cyprian and Rasaki, Rasakai, whatever. Um, they're playing as Japan and Portuguese. And on the south side of the map, we can see that <laughs> Rasaki has already used his um, spyglass and he kind of just missed Najem not by much and again yeah Najem playing as tonal jump he is playing as Japan and I am more a German playing as Chinese now we have a 300 wood start as usual for Chinese and another 40 wood which is always good so I would only have to gather like 60 wood if I don't find any other wood treasure and it's a good like they get 50 wood here as well but 100 coin is never a good start for Japan because that means that they'll have to gather 106 wood for their first shrine. So, okay, without further ado, let's let's begin the game. So, yeah, so this is primarily on my point of view. Now I'm using the tower to kill the snow leopard just to make sure that I can scout more area with the two scouts that are given to me. Um, just using villagers uh, to get inside the town center and get out of the other side to make sure that they're not wasting time in walking around. Those are precious little seconds saved. Now, I would like to talk about the positioning of this village. It's just under the town center fire, so that means if someone is trying to um, knock it down from even that side, it would be in range of the town center fire, so it's defendable. But at the same time, I'm keeping me keep in mind um, that I have to make another village and I, I have to use another refugees card, which will end up spawning villagers from the villages as well. If I were to create the village in a more defensive areas, like maybe somewhere around here, that wouldn't be very good. So that is why um, I thought, okay, you know what, I'll, I'll put it there. Of course, it's not as defendable as this. But, at the same time, it is saving quite a lot of walking time for villagers right now. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now again, I came across this treasure and I need almost 50 wood here. So, yeah, this was a misclick. So, yep, now it should be fine. And now I would be focusing on getting this villager um, in and out again. And that was sort of a mistake, because I wanted to do that slightly earlier, but anyway. Yeah, so that was it. Now I can send out Northern Refugees. Now you notice I have only one house, and I've sent out Northern Refugees, so that kind of got me excited in a bad way. <laughs> so I sent out three villagers to do that, to create the village. But I think if I had sent just one, like just two... It would still have gone up in time and maybe even with just one but I just didn't want to take chances because at the end of the day you're missing out on one entire villager which isn't really good so yeah that's about it so right now not much to do here um, Kung Fu Panda and Nox and Victim taking care of this and they would be getting some five food right here which should help them age slightly faster because if you remember, it was a 200 wood start, so he had to spend a lot of time gathering wood, which means he spent less time gathering food. So, yeah. 
this would definitely help. Um, and I have found out this treasure which should help me fast forward crystal out. That's my agenda right now. I'm not planning to rush and pressurize the opponents, mainly because they're Japan and Portuguese right here. If we notice, they're trying to get the 110 vote, but that's that's not very wise. Oh, lucky. That was so lucky. And Whoa, what is going on? Do they want it or no? <laughs> wow, they were so lucky on this one. Anyway, going back to what's going on here. I've started to hurt this um, herd of Saigas back in. I'm starting to herd these back in as well. Now the herds aren't too close. And yeah, I started to age with five villagers because my starting time isn't too good. And I, I was kind of making sure that I age up at the right time. Just to make sure that I have these shipments available if I was pressured. So that's the only idea right here. Of course, I'm trying to gather 300 gold in transition as much as possible. And then that's that. And from here, I'm training a disciple. To help me get this but something funny happened here which you guys will find out soon enough um continuing to hurt these as well and this is what happened i started hitting the tiger before i spawned this disciple which was kind of stupid and then i there was a misclick i started moving him around and that ended up being really really bad for me so I got anxious and I sent a villager to maybe collect it if and when the tiger is killed. <sighs> Which didn't really happen at that point. But of course, another point is this villager should be near the monk as soon as I age up, which shouldn't take too long. So that's not a big deal. So I would be going here and I would try to herd this particular herd back towards my town center or Closer to my, uh, yeah, closer to my side, towards my base. And as you can see, the monk is right here. All good. And now I should be able to get it easily. Now I wasn't sure if I got it or not. That's why I didn't remove the villagers and move them to other work. But now that I do, I'm moving them further. And I've sent out 700 coin, as you can see. So just trying to take care of things now if you notice i did find this shrine so i was a lot more active in sending the saigas away just to make sure that this 75 wood investment is actually a waste because it would be giving him like 15.15 wood per second that's like 1.5 wood in 10 seconds and 15 wood in entire minute that's not efficient at all and at the same time um it's 75 wood investment which is away from his base and it's not defendable at all so it's it's not really good for him and i've pretty much sent the entire herd away from here meanwhile my partner has been shrining in the opponent's base like in the front line of opponent's base which is not a bad idea ever so that's good um and yeah now i'm collecting gold i have enough food as you can see I'm just collecting enough gold and I would be aging with that. Some idle villagers. And here I wasn't really, I don't know, like I could have used them to enter. Yeah, I did actually end up using them to enter and exit the town center. That was quick. I could have done that with the village as well, but you know, in the heat of the moment, at times you're not thinking that straight. And there we go with the Confucian Academy, which should give me. Ten, uh, eight arquebusiers as soon as I ate. So I have started aging up again slightly late, but uh, yeah, I'm using five villagers to age up just to make sure I age up on time as well. And if you notice, um, the opponents they're not really that aggressive. Again, it's Portuguese and Japan, you don't expect them to be too aggressive anyway. So, 
like we have enough um what do i say yeah i i was sure that we have enough time because they're not at all aggressive on us and that just simply made my build so much better now if you notice i did not create a market yet because i wasn't wasting any time on that i just wanted to age as fast as i could that was the idea it was a greedy fast age build rather than an economic fast age build but yeah it simply justifies or i'm not going to say justifies but it, it explains everything that i was doing and now i'm sending this villager to start hurting these back furthermore and i would be aging at any point in time now as you can see i'm creating the consulate and war academies and now finally a market one war academy i think i would be creating another one soon enough but i'm not sure yet now the idea of this consulate making the consulate so late in comparison to japan is like japan need that for making their buildings cheaper now i need this for making my military units cheaper so i combine with germany and make the units make the military units a lot cheaper so that's the idea behind it now this herd has come back quite quite well and this one is still a long way to go and i think it does um back herds as well unluckily for me but yet it is what it is that's part of the game and yeah there it is it just back hurt it okay so yeah i'm just getting the blanket filters i just got the um i don't know the eagle one which helps you you know like it costs 25 wood 25 wood and 25 food you get a like five or ten percent quicker from hunted animals yeah i've been doing that and in the meantime my partner did show me that they have started to take down shrine but i think it's a little too late if you ask me at nine minutes maybe they they were kind of not sure either now i notice it here not yet i mean my partner mentioned it to me so i was taking the arquebusiers here which are skirmisher type unit but he told me over here that his shrines are being taken out so i sent them there because even though they're just eight i could just easily try to kite them as much as possible and make the most out of it and i i shipped then an, another 1000 uh, wood mainly because i can it's that simple i simply can because there are there is no pressure um and i continue to take down this shrine and i was able to kill, uh i just couldn't show you guys i was able to take down two or three musketeers from there was i oh no now i do okay i i did manage to show you so i took down three musketeers right here which was good got chang dao and archibaziers as well over there um i should be getting german soon enough i'm just waiting why it isn't allied to germany yet but anyway everything's going pretty easy i mean of course i could have made it a little quicker and then trained the army but i needed the army way way in time and i'm gonna make another war academy now probably drop down a couple of houses more and in the meantime he was able to pick down two pikes which isn't the worst thing if you ask me i mean he had so many units that it could have been a lot worse again no pressure so i'm not sure which one i'm gonna ship i think 1000 coin yep <clears throat> so i ship 1000 coin now the musketeer is taking down my partner's shrines and he's taking down five no four three of, of the opponent's shrines now the important thing to notice here is that my partner and i were both aged up while um cyprian is the only one who hasn't aged up so we are definitely in advantage right now i have these archibusiers just out of range right now um and if musketeers do come in i could maybe use them to do that but what happens is these eight ashigurus start taking down the trading post and just i don't want any cheap villager kills against me so i just take them away and put them on gold here um 
yeah and i am allied to germany and i'm training units so that's all going good and the next one okay so this is something that i missed out on i wasn't sure i didn't see them come in i just knew that they were here and i put them push them away as well and then i noticed what's happening here so i'm probably gonna pull them back as well yep so i think i lost like four units that i sh could have avoided so that's something for for the future and at the same time he starts sieging it again now the idea of using the scout here is to snare them because i know that they're gonna die if i snare them which basically ends up happening so if you notice the one that I have snared is the one that I'm not really shooting. So this one is the one that I have snared and I'm not really shooting him yet. And now that I know it's just these three, I can pretty much take out everyone except him. And the guy that was snared was taken out by my scout only, so which was basically the idea. Now if you notice <laughs> my partner has a tendency to take out all the coin on our side. Okay, he left this one, but that's okay. He's probably going to get it later on. Rather than getting this or this, he preferred this because it's a lot safer if you think about it again. Because it's right in the middle rather than on the edge. So I would be thinking this is not as safe as this for me as well. And this is safer. So yeah, I get the town center up just for that case. And we see three hussars here and I'm just continuing to expand my um, my army which has become a lot scarier now if you notice it's, it's really scary and so is his it's, it's a decent army but again Chinese army looks scary because it's always a good combination of scums and and the cavalry things like that now if you notice these are pretty much the same as this but these are disciplined ashigarus and these are regular ashigaru musketeers so 27 attack and 173 hit points versus 37 attack and 204 hit points it's it, there is no competition right there and so i i had an idea of snaring them because i saw them here i thought that i would just come around them and kill them but at the same time these two calves were just wasting my time and I think I should have just sent like maybe seven Chang Daos here rather than so many and then what I do is I just basically toss them on this and I think like you know I, I think I can sn snipe a few of them so I did manage to get one yeah I, I did manage to get one which wasn't really good I could have gone a lot more, got a lot more than that, but it is what it is. Now I think I can use it, maybe get 10, 11 Chang Daos and just go and attack. That's it. That is probably what I'm thinking right now. Yep. So that's the idea right here. Me in the meantime, taking down the shrines again. Now, if you notice, this is something that I I say quite a lot. That I don't understand people like Japan making too many shrines in their opponent's base, like you can't really defend that, that's wasting 75 into like 5 again after 75 into 3 right here, that is if you're still if you're still uh, in, in console, if you still have that um, Portuguese ally, now you notice my partner allied with Dutch and got out the bank the arsenal and the church as well which should help them, of course church will help him uh, train units quicker with that research if he goes to the fortress not not the fortress the uh, industrial age armory is arsenal is always good and the bank is 2.75 points per second that's not bad at all that's that's pretty decent now i got these for free of course from summer palace so i would be sending them for scouting purpose or maybe just get some cheap raids and my advancing here is primarily meant to snipe out any weird villagers which are out of position like these two and maybe snipe a few units and get back now I was quite a bit out of position right here but I knew that my opponent knew that there were 
Jang Daos, quite a few Jang Daos, and he would be expecting them to be somewhere here. So what I do is, without wasting too much time, without counting on my luck, I actually send them a little further forward. I was like, you know what, I think I can maybe get the tower down, maybe snare a few units and then start taking them out. But that was a mistake here because I was literally walking into a spot and I see so many units here, I know that this isn't good. So I lost four Changdaos for nothing. And I sent these to take down villagers on the back of it. He was wise enough to know that there were four calves trying to take out villagers. But that was it. And it, at the same time, I'm just trying to take out... I did manage to take out another villager here. I see Naginatas. So I walk back. And I notice his units as well. So now I know it's a two versus one situation. I would definitely be outmassed here. There is no way I can win. There is organ gun at the back as well doing damage so i'm trying to save as many as i can using the control groups that i had used to secure them and i had right clicked it here to make sure that um, you know it, it reaches there and then i can continue pressurizing that was the idea but when i saw Rasakai in the cyprian space i was like you know what it's it's not it's not safe for me to actually it's not it's not wise for me to fight this particular fight and as you can see my partner still has no idea what's going on <laughs> he i mean of course he has an idea what's going on but he's doing a little funny thing right here trying to take out just trying, <laughs> trying to wall this guy that's what donald trump does he walls everyone Maybe this monk is in Japanese, but Mexican. We don't know. Anyway, so they did ma this. They did stop here, but I did not notice that. I did. I didn't remember I had sent one flying crow out here, and that was big mistake. And I did ended up losing it for literally nothing. If you notice right here, I didn't even know about it. So now the idea, since I am industrial, the idea was. Sooner or later, like of course I will be upgrading Changdaos and Arkebuziers, but sooner or later I will be switching to Old Han because Old Han is overpowered. In the meantime, these calves did quite well. They did go here and killed like six or seven villagers. Um, I can't see that in this right now. Anyway, I'll show in the post game probably. And like he has honored Ashigaru's, like we're both in the f industrial age and the opponents in the fortress age and we have more score than them as well. So we're in a really strong position now. If we lose, it's definitely down to us. I'm just adding more war academies. Um, so now industrial in China is so overpowered, like it gives you access to such amazing um shipments like 21 two canoes 21 pikemans old hand reforms which is an insanely strong card i can't stress that enough it can take out literally everything even gendarmes um and then there is this i i love this card because for 2000 food you get three uh flying crows and eight iron flails so if you have enough army and you're left the good thing is if you have like Right now, the population, we can support a total population of 220 units. But if I have 219 population units, I can send that card again and maybe overpop myself knowing what I'm doing. You know, it's just a way of doing it. Now, if you notice, I don't have all the villagers in, but it's it's still going pretty good. Um, So... It's nothing's happening right now, so I'm just gonna play a little faster for some time. I did upgrade the trading post because they didn't get one. Yes, I can see that. And now I added all these just to make send this Saiga herd as well, which basically is a really really strong shipment. Now I I don't know what I'm doing. I think I sent yeah. No, I, I was trying to add multiple um, Old Han armies, so I'm basically changing it to Old Han now. 
that's the idea. And on the back of it, I'm continuously upgrading pikes and uh, chukunus. So right now I have honored chukunus and I will have honored pikes as well. Right here, they're disciplined and now they're honored. That's good. Now, if I notice, if you notice, I have 200. So I just basically cancelled one of them and then sent out 21 pikes. So like I was saying, I have overpopped myself knowingly. So I have 237 units out of a total of possible 220, which is great with China, especially in this age. Um, again, these are meant for scouting mainly to make sure we know what's happening around there. Um, and yeah, my partner is aging up with great Buddha, which would help him show basically what's going on entirely in the opponent's space for some time, which is good, which is good because we are definitely ready for a fight. And there are the pikes right here, 21 pikemen. And I'm ready. Like, look at this. I, I was starting to add control groups. Of course, I didn't notice this little possible cheeky raid unit, raiding party from Cyprian. Um, so I did notice that, and I was sending Chico News to stop him here, but he didn't end up turning and taking out the shrine instead. I don't know why. Um. Yep, so nothing fancy other than that. I sent them here to block it the way. And if you notice, I, I really don't have population now, so I have 69 villagers, which is an intriguing sum. Um, but yeah, took out three for nothing. Now, Chukonus are super strong in themselves, like honor Chukonus are very good. And then on top of it, when I get the old hand reforms that would be just a really strong thing now getting 10 10 or 8 i don't know uh yeah 8 naginata writers and i think he would be showing what's going on everywhere which should help us now i'm just basically control grouping all these units like um one and two maybe having arquebusiers and chukanus and three and four having pikemen and shangdaos something like that and with the informers now we know what's going on we know that their army is definitely not good enough to take care of us now this army is pretty decent but it's still not good enough now these are upgraded units if you know so i mean looking at everything it feels like the game is already over but we could still lose because a lot of that value in there is on these units. And that's where China is slightly weird. Because in skirmishes, you can't really use pikemen and Changdao. You can simply use them as anti cavalrys uh, Or taking out buildings and stuff. You can use them to soak some damage as well. And maybe force the opponents to, you know, you just just like a colonial Russia, just ram all your units into opponent's throat and let them do what they do. Now, they are honored Ashigarus, which are pretty strong as well. 48 and 40. Yeah. So that, that was pretty good for me. Now, I did notice Naginata's coming in from there and... Um, the organ guns doing some damage as well but this is what i love about china look at this just making it pretty much impossible for the opponent because there are so many units in there making it impossible for the opponent to do anything about the mass of course japan is still strong and these two organ guns are getting a great value out of it mainly because there is no threat to them and on the, at the same time um ashiguru's from my partner going into their base so it's it's a fight that over here i convincingly win like this is just one spawn of unit that i had and i'm winning it and i'm forcing cyprian to get the um second batches third batches out and if you notice at the score his score has dropped big time 
and my score didn't really drop. Now sending old hand reforms were just slightly late for me, I think, but still not too late, but later than never, right? So now sending this out. I'm probably gonna train more units here as well. There is one flank crew here as well, so I mean I could have used there are so many units in China that you just get weirded out by that. Like it's overwhelming at times, so I completely forgot about this. And now in this final batch he should be able to clear me up. Uh, but at the same time, if you look at the resources that I have and the score that I have, I I was I knew that I had done enough damage now. I know that Cyprian won't be able to take care of me at all in the, in the next the next army that I take there. He's definitely going to die. And in the meantime, my partner is clearing out pretty much everything in their base. And look at that, it's just going straight into the base because his 382 hit points, like that's in incredible and 56 attack. That is just insane. Just goes to the base, starts taking down villagers. So this does one thing. It either kills the villager entirely or forces them to get in. And rightly so, Resaikai giving up. Because he knew that they, he couldn't do anything about it. Now I'm making the final batches of my final um, old Han reforms. And... I did notice these villages, but I was looking for other possible places. But you know, I thought, you know what, never mind, let's just take out these villagers themselves. Um, so I send them back here. I noticed this. I noticed the villagers. And bam. I started taking out villagers right here. At the same time, I am adding up to this army. And by the way, the army that I have right here, right now. That's strong enough to take out everything in his base now. I know that for sure. Like, look at look at this. That's all he has. That is pretty much all he has. That's not good enough. And we know it. So I just right-click it. Keep them crammed up. And look at that go. That's the idea. Just keep them so crammed up that Naginatas can't do anything. And I know for sure that... Ashigarus can't do anything about it yet. There is one thing though that I thought that maybe Japan here Cyprian could have done better, which was actually getting flaming arrows up because Old Han can only be beaten by strong artillery, like really strong artillery. Of course I have this seven hand mortars card specifically for that. They're really good against uh artilleries. So that's good. Um I did invite him all his cows back here using these uh, my raiding cows and look at what I'm doing right here these are so strong like all honored pikemen into the town center and they throw it like three or four times and that's it the, the town center is get down and now the villagers have nowhere to go I'm also sending this place where the villagers might have gone trying to take it out um, but yeah, it's pretty much over here. And I'm not worried, like, there will be more units coming in. I know that whatever units come in, we can't take care of it. Um, Shinobi did end up coming in. And being cleaned up so easily by it. These Chukunus are super strong, like 12 ranged attack. Of course, you think it's just 12. But what actually it is, is the Chukanus send 3 arrows per shot, so it's like 36. And then that's times 2 against heavy infantry. So it's, it's really strong. And yeah, so finally he resigned, and we ended up winning pretty comfortably in the end. Um, so if you take a look at the resources, economy, my partner was way ahead. But then spent on units, look at that, that's what China does, like you spend a lot of money on units. And if you notice, the military count is incredible right here. Um, sadly for Risakai, he wasn't able to trade so well for the units that he had, lost all of them. Um, and Donald Trump actually got the best trade, like my partner got the best trade in there. 
finally I wanted to show the villager count there that I ended up getting which was somewhere around this right yeah so this was the time when we were fighting if you notice there will be military count drop somewhere around here for me there it is so this is when Cyprian and Rosakai were trying to um, basically snare me together that's when I sent four will four calves on the back side of the village and I end up getting from thirty nine to thirty two that's like seven villagers for free and he didn't even notice that so that was really good for me I mean he noticed but it was too late for that finishing on seventy eight villagers not as bad as it could have been but still it was pretty decent I think and finally it was it was a good game all right so